Okay, now family, our cake is out of the oven. This is the color and this is what it looks like. Okay. Hey everybody, how y'all doing? How you hey okay? In your neck of the woods, so what up, what up? Man as a respect man, I your girl, Debbie from Dongayan. Welcome you all to the Christmas kitchen. Welcome once more to the Jamaican cooking journey. All of you are new right on over here, special welcome. Thank you so much. Those of you who were there from the beginning, man as a respect, I. Christmas met me can't talk, but that Christmas thing. Now today, what I'm gonna share with you is to prepare, how to prepare a sorrel cake. Yeah, sorrel cake. And just get right in with me. We're gonna be using some butter. Use your butter of chives, the, the margarine. Use your margarine or your butter of chives, okay? I am in Jamaica, I've got to use what I can get. And most of all, what I can afford and also what has worked for me over the donkey years and it never do me nothing okay now to this you're gonna want some really fine brown sugar and if you can't get your brown sugar because i am like or the compact one if you can't get it you can what i did because me get the one with the granules or sort of course so i just put it in my food processor and put it on high for about three minutes let it run so I got, you know, I get this. So you want to put in about three quarters of a cup. You know, want, not only, do not put a lot of sugar in the cakes. I say to you all family, go low on the sugar. Sweetness does not mean that you're going to enjoy it. Sweetness is not flavor. Okay? Go low on the sugar with your fruit cake. All your cake, you just go low. Make when you're eating a cake, you can't enjoy it. You can't yam up all that because it's not too sweet. Okay? So I have my, um... Me, if you have a um a KitchenAid um blender, a KitchenAid um mixer, you might can just put it in there and use it. Cause you know the mixer they powerful. But if you don't have one like mine, you just run the sugar in the food processor. I cannot have no food processor. Can never I have no neither. You just put it in a cheese, some stronger, and just get some slap. Just beat it up. So we are gonna go now, and you know how to do that. We are gonna go now cream or sugar and or butter we have got here five medium eggs are they a little bit but you can use three if they're extra large you can use three them big 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 and if them little small bit of bigger man you use four i'm using five of these of course it's sorrel cake so you have got to have some sorrel um puree and you're gonna say miss debbie where do i get it from i'll tell you how you get your sorrel puree so we are gonna go now cream off our butter and our sugar and we turn to show you how we'll be adding our eggs okay everybody know for cream butter and sugar i guess okay now family we have finished creaming our butter and our sugar <clears throat> now i want to say something you are to start creaming on low and then gradually you proceed to high low brings the butter and the sugar together okay at low speed, it sort of mushes up the butter and the sugar to make them kind of mix them together. Then as you go on high, it starts creaming. So, you see this almost look like a kitchen head one. Why it looks like that? So when you cream it and you hold it, it's not supposed to take forever to fall off on the, on the spoon or the spatula. You know? It's supposed to fall off easily. So you cream it until it comes to that to 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 that um part or to that i don't know some words <laughs> so our consistency cream it until you have it falling off easily that's the butter and the sugar because sometimes when you don't give the butter and the sugar enough treatment you don't cream them long enough for them to come together to a certain consistency and you start adding the eggs then some little things start get wrong in the cake you know all kind of little stupidity go on but how we do we know as you go you will grow so cream it until it comes you know until it comes to this so now we are gonna be adding our eggs and can i say something to you i think i'm going to make a video and talk about that one in what adding the eggs one at a time you know and not over beating because i am not in for that okay but we're not going to discuss that right now this one at a time and 
when you add it one at a time, you won't over be the eggs. Me not in panda one day. What do you think about that? You know, but let us leave that for another time, okay? So I'm gonna add my little one then. Two at a time or three. If three get in, then that's a god thing now. Right? Okay, so now that you drop your eggs in, you want to do it on like a sort of medium, low to medium, not high for beating in the eggs. You don't want to beat up them too much, you know? So we are going to go now and get the egg them beat out and come back to you, eh? Okay, now, two, we have our eggs and um, our um, beat in, okay? Now, we want to put in some flour at this point, at this point. We want to put in some flour and i tell you how much flour you know but i watch when me i put in yes right now i always say to you sift your flour when you sift your flour whilst going in there it becomes lighter therefore hair will be trapped inside the cake and you get a better case tasting cake every time so i put sift out the flour and that's the first of our dry ingredients the flour we are gonna I'll leave everything for you in the description. We are gonna be putting in some mixed spice. And I tell you not all the while. Now put in a whole for the mixed spice up now, you see? Because it's bitter. Okay? So I've just put in a little mixed spice. I'll tell you how much in the description. I'm gonna go now. Add my baking powder, a little salt. I'll leave all of that in the description and some cinnamon powder. I will let you know. These are all the dry ingredients. We soon come. Okay, you now family, we are back. We have preheated our oven to 165 degrees Celsius. If you're using Fahrenheit, 330. We want, we don't want this cake to bake on too much of a high, you know, high temperature. We want it to go slow. So, dry ingredients all into this um, this um, creamed mixture. So you know the norm. You must cut and fold. Okay, cut and fold as you go along. Once the dry ingredients has been added, once it is, because sometimes you add the dry ingredients to the cream mixture, which is the wet mixture. But sometimes in baking, you have got to add the, the wet one to the dry. Okay? So whatever you do, once you do it that way, sometimes you're not, you don't normally add the dry to the wet. Sometimes it's the wet to the dry. So when you're having the wet to the dry, you know how you are to do it. Cut and fold it just the same. Okay? So you cut. Cutting and folding in, it enables it not to have any lump when the cake bake. You know, see the white flour lump, the out that skin out then teeth with your like in it for up. It doesn't look good. It's not a good look. It's not cute. Okay? So you cut and fold until you don't see no more of that white flour something. Okay? So you see how me doing it fast, but so look at it. You cut and you fold. Cut, fold. Cut, fold. Now, we're going to be putting in some of this sorrel chutney. Maybe not all. And you are to choose a red, red sorrel. Try to get one that is of a good, good, good type of sorrel. So let us fold in this sorrel chutney. And we're going to fold it in and stir it low. Eh? Let's fold it in your face. Huh? Seems Michael might want all. Not sure. Same cutting and folding. Cutting and folding. And we're going to put all of it in there. This is a sorry cake. Don't ask nothing about the sorry chutney yet. We will talk to you. We'll do the video. Not the chutney. The sorry puree. Come on, girl. You can't correct me. Sorry puree. And I know already that know how I get that's we get this sorry puree, you know. Cut and fold. Now we have a little fruits here. It's optional if you want to, because this sorry puree, you know, it has in the ginger and all of the nice flavor from the sorry. You know. So this this good. In. So we're going to put in the look of fruits. We're going to add a little vanilla. Okay. And we're going to cut and fold right back in. We have our cake pan or cake tin that has been greased and lined. 
Now we are going to be putting in some chopped nuts. Use your nuts of choice. I'm using a little almond or almond. So I'm put in just to make it nice. Catch a Christmas thing, you know. So that's okay. If you want to go more, you go more. We just want to make the thing nice, eh? Look at this. If you want a little more, you can put it in for make it a little nutty at you, you know. But I feel like I'm going put in a little more because when I eat that cake, I feel like a crunch. What do you say about that? Tell me something about that. What you look for? Oh, that cake you look. Come on, girl. You like the cake? Look at it. This, you see the, this is the mo you, look at it. Look at the texture of the butter. This is how you want the butter. You don't want it stiff and stand up like it in a stiff jacket. Okay? And you don't want to put a lot of flour in there. Okay? Alright. So, look here. We have a pan. All grease, all line, as he did that for me. He does a good job when I'm baking. He always grease and line my things and they never stick. I hope it not stick here now, Ozzy. Now I'm going to pan camera. I think we're not going to see him. But for you. No, we want to taste. And this is good. Mm-mm. Yes, a little peanut, a little almond ladna. We're gonna get our cake tin and we're going to come back and show you how we fill out our cake tin. We're waiting on our oven to be fully pre eaten So when we return, we are gonna have that something that cake tin, yeah, that's real cake, yeah. Right in your face, shoving into the oven. All properly greased and lined cake tin. Okay. So I'm gonna put now, remember, you're not to fold it all the way up. Depends on the amount. I, but I'll give you. I'll give you, and I think all of this can go into mine. Yep, this is the this is an original 10 inch cake tin. Cause some of them sitting over there, I wanna tell you, but a 10 and 9. Aye, hello. If you're glad for your age, if you're my age and a little older or a little younger, please come in. Be glad for my age, you know, cause them sitting here with them, I tell we know what this, them now work good enough with me. So look here, right in your face. Hi, hello. Do not take this thing and slam it down. Don't. Just gently leveling it off. Yes. So this is an original 10 inch cake tin. This cake tin is older than my daughter camera girl. Okay. So we have it here almost three quarter because we have to give it room for rice because we have the baking powder, we have the raisin agent. So we're going to go in. And 165, it's almost supposed that that pre the preheat signal is supposed to come off in the middle of the oven, right there. We are gonna leave it gently. Close your oven. Try not to whilst the in the first half an hour to 45 minutes. Try to keep away from the oven. Do not try to be working on the stove top to be jerking the stove, or else you might get a fall in the cake or some dent or something. Just for the first 45 minutes, let us see what will happen. 45 minutes time, it will not bake in 45 minutes. You know. Maybe about a hour and 20 minutes, okay? But 45 minutes or 50 minutes time we return, or maybe an hour to see what it looks like. We soon come. Okay, now family, our cake is out of the oven. This is the color, and this is what it looks like, okay? We have a little, sort of little crack in here, but that's, it's the nature of the cake. It's not anything else to do with it. But as it cools and get back, it back into gear, everything will just come up. So the first first thing we want to do is to test if the cake is baked. So we, we don't turn our oven off as yet, you know. So you want to use this says here. It says cake tester. That simply means your cake tester must be of this size. Your cake tester not be big, not like this. And I have spoken this so many times, so so many times on the Jamaican cooking journey. And I hope people are into it because you may never know. This might be a question for further giveaways, okay? So make sure you're in. This is a no-no to be putting this size thing in there. A toothpick, if you have got one of those, um, what's that thing there, um, camera girl? The, um, the thing that we use to do the skewer. Skewer, toothpick, or better yet, the cake tester. So we want to, the middle, the middle is okay. Once it comes out clean, every time, you know it's okay. 
some people might want to run um some people use a knife i'm using this patella the edges are really you know dull they're not sharp so i'm just gonna use this to run around and you notice mine did not rise it has in the baking powder but the nature of it is that it's weighty this cake is really weighty so you won't get it coming up like, up because that sorry puree it's really weighty it's heavy okay when you do yours you'll see so if you notice it it's up and it's shaking up in there we're gonna leave it on our wire rack to cool for about 45 minutes before we can come we're gonna leave it in this and in the pan in the cake tin on the wire rack before we can come to invert it directly onto the wire rack this cake has the consistency or maybe a little heavier than the jamaican black cake it is the sorrel puree that gives it this weight in this, this body so we're gonna leave it here on the wire rack and the top open for the five minutes then we'll come back to take it out and to leave it on the wire rack or maybe we'll not come back we we'll just turn it out under the wire rack and let it wait until we can take out a slice for you we will soon be with you okay now family all out this is the finished product we did not try to leave it on the direct direct wire rack because we wanted to show you and we also wanted to cut a piece where but it's still really up but we're gonna try so let me present to you from my kitchen to yours so my jamaican kitchen to your family table to your christmas dinner table most of all to your plate and to your stomach it's sorrel cake done from scratch you saw me i did it now i know you're gonna ask please do enjoy you're gonna ask me debbie how did you get the sorrel chutney i'm gonna do for you a video not chutney i keep saying chutney the sorrel puree i'll do for you in a video how you prepare the sorrel to get the puree and i guess some people might have an idea it's not anything hard okay we're gonna try to take out a slice for you okay so you want to put your cake at the direct center your knife i'm sorry this is a serrated knife but i suggest you use a clean cut knife as opposed to a serrated one this is really warm in a family so now i cut it i'm gonna use my pull out the slice just for you look at this camera girl could you shoot them up on that look at that y'all if you have liked this video remember to hop 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 that's how we are kicking it off on the Jamaican cooking journey 12 days of Jamat Jamas what do you know about that what do you like about that leave it in the comment section make sure you're subscribed I I I want me a warm up you know me a chewing I'm sorry for to be talking and eating but that's how it go I want me a warm up you know that's how we're kicking off 12 days of Jamas please remember to like share subscribe Leave your comments below. That is how you become a member of our post notification crew. And today we have two post notification shout outs. We have one from the corn meal, corn beef fried dumpling. And we also have one from our introduction of Chama's video. So we have Kayla T from the corn beef video. Big up yourself, manners and respect. You did it again. And also on the introduction to Jamas video we have Kimmy Minzy hi Kimmy big up yourself big up yourself young lady manners and respect now I hope you hi hello that's how we are kicking it up now the talk much longer you know Debbie from Dunga Yard bless no stress 